Good morning. This is day two of the devotional readings um, that God has given me and I wanted to share with you. So before we get started, we're going to go to God in prayer. Father, Lord, we just thank you for the day. We thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. We ask that you forgive us of our many sins, Lord God, known and unknown, Lord God. We ask that you take us into your presence, Lord God. Lord God, we're asking, Lord God, that we be seated at the table with you, Lord God, to feast in your word, Lord God, for you to teach us, Lord God, for you to give us a word, Lord God. Lord, I ask that you decrease me and increase you, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you for what you're going to share with us and all of your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to be in Matthew today. Now, Matthew is the first book of the New Testament for those um, new believers or baby Christians. Um, we're going to be in chapter 19, and we're going to be in verse 29. In this book of the Bible, while you're trying to find it, Jesus is talking to the disciples. And actually, Peter is asking a question of, we've left everything to follow you. Basically, he's wondering, what do we get in return for that? And um, Jesus is going to be telling Peter, Peter, so, um, oh, my camera messed up a little bit right there. So we're going to go to, jump down to verse 29, though, and it reads, And anyone and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will even be blessed a hundred times more and will inherit eternal life. Now, what I like to do is cross-reference the scriptures because what I found is Everything that Jesus has said in the New Testament, God has already said in the Old Testament. So if we go back to Genesis 26 and 12, and everybody knows where Genesis is, that's in the Old Testament, that's the first book of the Bible. If you shoot back to Genesis 26 and 12, it reads, Then Isaac sowed seed in that land, and received in the same year, a hundred times as much as he had planted, and the Lord favored him with blessings. So I noticed a lot of cross references with the scripture. But the title of the devotional today is <laughs> All Bets on Me. All Bets on Me. I don't know about you, but I was a faithful casino goer. I loved going to the casinos. As soon as payday came, I was at the casino. I'd get my little drink, I'd light my little cigar and sit down and then have the nerve to touch the machine. Lord, please bless this machine to do good today. Amen. Now I'm saying a prayer. And you know, you look around and you see others and they're sitting at their machines. And you see, it's so funny and I think back how people are so ritual they would bring you know maybe a little doll or something to bring the machine good luck bring them good luck bring winnings out of the machine but what i've noticed is a lot of people go into casinos and you see the sign up on top you know a hundred times more winnings if you play the max bet so i would quickly be drawn to those machines because i figured if i'm playing the max bet and i'm playing you know over five hundred dollars I'm sure to get a hundred times return well I never did and at time one I remember a couple times I played my whole check and I was just irritated but I never seen that hundred times winnings I always played that hundred times max bet but I never seen those hundred times winnings and I found myself going lower and lower and lower until I start playing the penny slots and them could be even worse than the quarters and dollars slot because you continually plan you thinking oh this is just some pennies well when I came into Christ the thing I was doing was I was going to the casinos but I was still going to church and I know that's a debate between people and they think you know as long as you give your tithes and your 10 percent that everything else is okay you can do what you want well I disagree with that the way God showed it to me was it says that even in his word, the appearance, you don't even want the appearance, shun the appearance of evil. Because, I mean, if that's a stumbling block, just think of somebody in your church. Just think of somebody you put way up here. Even think of your pastor. 
Can you imagine going into the casino and seeing your pastor plan? That would throw you all off. Why would it throw you off? Because you thinking, I thought they were supposed to be a Christian. They ain't supposed to be gambling, are they? And then the Christians are thinking, you know, I give my tithes and I do what I'm supposed to do. So I feel that I'm able to gamble. Well, I don't agree with that. I disagree. Um, how God showed it to me was when Jesus was hanging on the cross, they were casting lots under him. So while the blood was running down, while he was dying for our sins, they were casting lots. And for those who don't know what casting lots means, that's shooting craps or gambling. So they were casting lots for his robe, for his garment. So that showed me every time I am throwing the dice or every time I am pushing the button gambling to win, I got to think Jesus is over my machine and his blood is running down. And he's dying for my sins while I'm pushing the button. Now, I know that goes a little deep, but that's the way he shows me. And I don't want to be a stumbling block to anybody else. And to do that would be like everybody else or be like the world does. So to go into this scripture in Matthew 19, 29, it says, And anyone and everyone, so that means all of us, who has left, houses or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake so what that shows me is that I'm leaving the world behind I can't associate myself with everything that goes on in the world because when I do I become a part of it so I was still doing my thing on the weekends but I was doing God during the week and on Sundays and you can't do that that's living double lifestyle and God revelation warns us either you be hot or either you be cold and not to be lukewarm because God will spew you out of his mouth and for those who don't know what spew means that means to vomit so if God vomits you out of his mouth I've never seen vomit get back up and walk away nowhere he leaves you right where you are that makes you susceptible to any and everything that comes for people to walk on you for people to go around you you know walking on you or going around you like the blessings that you want they're just it's just going all around you you just sitting stagnant in that place until you are ready to give your life back to God then yeah he cleans you up and he puts you back in him it's like you know the song the Mississippi Mass used to sing I thank God for my mansion the mansion God's spirit is like a mansion and we all have these mansions inside of him so anyone who has left the world, left all the worldly things, and come into him, you will be blessed a hundred times more. And that's a guarantee. That's not, you know, well, maybe if you play your money, then you'll get it. No, your faith in this game, your faith is your money. So you deposited that faith. You deposit those scriptures. When you keep pushing the button, you keep pushing the button under God, and you have that button that you're pushing, you're pushing it in worship. You're pushing it in praise. You're pushing it during the scriptures. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. you calling God back on his word. And when you're going up on the bed, you're going up. you go, you worshiping more. you increasing. You're doing everything that you can to get God's attention to show him you can trust me. You just keep up in your bed, keep up in your bed until you're not scared to play the max. A lot of people are scared to play the max bet with God. They rather, you know, they're cool with their lifestyle. They're cool with what they're doing. They're cool with the life that they're living and where God has them. And they don't want to really go up. They would rather stay where they are. And God does not want that. He wants you to do, He wants you to go up. He wants you to play the max bet. And playing the max bet is faith. It's trusting Him. A lot of people in the Old Testament played the max bet. That's my son, y'all. He just woke up. A lot of people have played the max bet. And what they do is, they, uh, back in the Old Testament, think about the man that lowered, they wanted to be blessed so bad that they lowered they fell from the roof to get Jesus' attention to be blessed. Think about the Phoenician woman that Jesus actually compared her to a dog. And she still had a witty 
comment back even the dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table it's in the book of Matthew you gotta find it they got some stories in there but these people had they had faith the one with the issue of blood that pressed through the crowd when all the people was pressing up on him pressed and touched the hem of his garment it wasn't the hem that she touched it wasn't her hand that touched out it was her faith that touched him and so when Jesus said who touched the hem of my garment the disciples was like are you crazy you know how many people are around you are you serious it wasn't they didn't understand their even though people go out in prayer even okay let me break it down like this you may go in prayer and be asking God to do this or that or the other but if you're not going in faith and believing that God is going to do it for you it's just like the people pressing that was just prayer request pressing up against him. It's the ones that have faith that speak it. The Lord talks about the tongue and how the tongue can speak life or speak death over you. You have to speak life over your situations. You have to play the max bet with God. You have to be all in. That means you have to take everything you have, all your faith, all your love, all your strength, everything that God gives you, and just take it and pour that into him. That's what he wants to see. He wants to see a generation of people that want to pour everything into him, everything in their lives. Everything is about him. And it's just, and when you get to that level, when everything is about him, everything goes okay. When the locusts come, that's what I call them, the, the, when the enemy sins because he knows we're about to get a harvest, and he sends them locusts to try to take over, that's when we got to put more money in the machine. That's when we got to put more faith in there. And we got to keep it, and that means we got to hit it harder. We got to go through the scriptures. We got to remember Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you after you've done all that. God wants to add things to you. He wants to add things to your life. He wants to bless us. He wants us to come out with the maximum bet and the maximum and the max winnings. In Deuteronomy, he tells us we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. Now, I'm not trying to say this to be a prosperity message, but it is because this is a good word. I'm not giving a prosperity message for finances. I'm giving a prosperity message for your soul, to make your soul prosperous, to make you feel like you won a million dollars. I don't know about you, but when I come into praise and worship and I enter his courts with thanksgiving, uh, his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, I feel like I won a million dollars after I get out of there. Why? Because it gives me a whole nother sense of new mercies every morning that he gives he gives me a whole nother sense of oh my god i just won because i'm pressing more faith into him i'm pressing more time into him i'm pressing whatever needs to be pressed whatever he wants me to press and not only am i pressing him i'm pressing lord what do you want to get from me what 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 is it that you want me to do so not only is, am i putting money into him my faith my dreams my hopes my desires He's already put them in me. So he's really the one that's giving me the money to put into him in the first place. And I know you're thinking, Keisha, what? Yes, look at the scripture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Think about it. He gives you the desires. Not only does he physically want to give them to you, but he's the one that is the giver of them. So the things that we're desiring on the inside, he's giving them to us. Just the simplest things. I know my channel is, I'm going to get off a little bit, natural hair channel. And I've inside, decided to incorporate this in. This hair texture that I have, I used to always get weave that looked like this hair. I wanted the crinkly hair. I wanted the, you know, spirals, the curls. And I never knew. That was my desire. I never knew once I cut the perm out and once I cut away the stuff that I thought was making me who I was, I seen that I have what I've always desired, the little things. So I just want to just encourage you today and just to trust God. And Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for what you've given us today. And Lord, we just ask that you bless it, Lord God, and bless the giver, me, of the word, and bless the receiver, you, to receive the word. I pray that everyone has an excellent day today, and I love you with the love of the Lord. Be blessed and be fabulous. In Jesus' name, amen.